FC Dallas head coach Shellis Hyman recorded his first league win as they rolled over the Galaxy last week. Kenny Cooper was the hero notching a pair of goals, and Dominic Aduro scored one as well. Today, they'll have their hands full north of the border. It's Dallas and Toronto FC next. Toronto has become a model franchise in Major League Soccer. BMO Field is where the game will be played today in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. It's FC Dallas and Toronto FC. Hello, everyone. Along with Dave Durr, I'm Ray Canterbury. Dave, FC Dallas comes into this match today with a ton of confidence. Last week, big 4-0 victory over the Galaxy. And in that game, what a game for Kenny Cooper. Two goals and an assist. That's why he's Major League Soccer Player of the Week. Well, you know, Ray, there's been talk all season, and that consistently make it a difference for Dallas. Lots of news from FC Dallas this week. Not so much on the field, but off the field. Well, no question. Dallas looking to make some news. A new and we now go down to the field and we have Drew Moore with us. Drew, outstanding first half by the entire team, but I thought the back four very good with you and Pitch Cole in the middle. Uh, yeah, things were solid, you know, we're we just... We haven't found him enough, and uh, things will change once we start doing that. Thanks, Drew. Good luck in the second half. Thanks, guys. That is FC Dallas defender Drew Moore. And there you see our score. Dallas nil, Toronto FC nil. The halftime festivity is coming up in a moment when FC Dallas soccer continues after this. It's a place where FC Dallas has had success. They're 2-0 at Toyota Park. They'll try it again today as FC Dallas and the Chicago Fire hook up once again. Along with Dave Durr, I'm Ray Canaveri. Hello, everyone. FC Dallas at a critical juncture of the season, Dave. They really need a victory today in the Windy City. Well, this time of season in MLS, Ray, every game is critical. There's no question. They've got those three games at home. I think if they take nine points there, they're going to be in good position. But this is the way to start momentum. A point here in Chicago against a very tough Chicago D, and I think they're going to start out on top. What do they need to do today, Dave, to be successful? Well, you're talking about a team that has Rays the lost a record 101 games last season, and if that wasn't bad enough, the team was last in the American League in team batting average. However, everyone would agree that the team's bullpen in Tampa Bay this weekend is the Southeast Team Championships. It is kids from age 8 to 15. It's a four-on-four -four competition, and the cool thing is these kids coming from all over the country will have an opportunity to compete in Venice, Italy. It How worked great almost that? to perfection. Manny Mahaltra scored the winner late in the second period to lift the Blue Jackets to a 3-1 victory over the Blackhawks. Overall, both teams didn't generate a lot of scoring chances, but were able to score on special teams. In other the sports racers news, will be putting their skills to the test here this weekend as the American Powerboat Association World Championships will take place off this pier. Boats will be racing at speeds well over one. position is now open for competition. He says the team is looking for a leader to dominate at that position over the next several years. Who will it be? Remains to be seen. Reporting from Raymond James, I'm Ray Canaveri. Now back to you in the studio. Good evening, I'm Ray Canterbury. Training camp is over, the team has moved into a plush new home, and now the Bucks are zeroing in on their next assignment, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Of all the preseason games, this is the biggie. The third game is when the starters play the most, and you get a good feel of what this team will look like when the season starts. It's also the last game before the first set of cuts, which means for some, the last game. Number one uh, you go job. You're going to go out and do your assignment and, and try to be the best. And you can catch Saturday's game right here. We'll be at the game starting at 7 o'clock. We'll have plenty of guests and be talking about the Bucks' upcoming season. We'll go right up until game time, which starts at 8. Just last month, Rays pitcher Scott Casimir was living the dream, had a career night shutting out the Red Sox for his 10th win. Then it was off to his first ever All-Star game. Since then, the Rays ace has seen the DL once and is still looking for that 11th win. Kaz back on the hill against the Rangers. Not a bad night. Struck out eight in six innings and became the club's career strikes leader. Here's how this one went down. Game tied to three in the seventh. Ben Zobers with the sack fly to center. Tomas Perez comes on down, made it 4-3 Rays. Travis Lee would add a homer for good measure in the eighth as the Rays. Edge the Rangers 5-3. Sean Camp gets the win. The Lightning had several goals after the season ended, one of which was bringing aboard a true number one goaltender. They did that by signing Mark Denis from Columbus in June. And for the first time since that transaction, we had a chance to catch up with Denis. He was in the Bay Area today. The former first round selection of the Colorado Avalanche played in Columbus the past five seasons, and he says he's fired up to play with the talent on this team. My whole career, I was in the Western Conference, so I was kind of glad I'm, uh, I'm on the right side of things now. 
In one of the most dominating performances ever, Tiger Woods blistered the field at Sunday's PGA Championship. This one was so good, we had to see it again. With a round of 68, including not one, but two successful birdie attempts from over 40 feet away, Tiger finished at 18 under. It's his 12th career major title, six shy of Jack Nicklaus. Finally, U.S. sprinter Justin Gatlin won't be sprinting for a while. The 100-meter world record holder will forfeit that title and his career for eight years. Gatlin tested positive in April for testosterone or other steroids, and by accepting the ban today, he's eligible to have an appeal to have the term reduced. That's a look at sports. I'm Ray Canaveri. Ron and Kate will be back with more news as soon as we come back. It's what everyone is talking about. He joins us with the story. What exactly is going on? The Tampa Bay Devil Rays may be packing their bags for good during spring training, which would mean fans would have to travel to see their favorite team. Of course, not everyone's thrilled about the team's decision to leave. This morning, Charlotte County commissioners agreed to spend more than $15 million of tourist tax money on a plan to help lower the Devil Rays spring training to Port Charlotte. As part of the plan, the Devil Rays will help renovate the Charlotte Sports Park Stadium and then move its spring training program to the south as early as 2009. And of course, local Devil Ray fans don't like the idea. Does it make the big difference? Yeah, for me. Because <laughs> I won't be able to see them as much. So, other than that, it doesn't really. As long as they don't move the regular season, I'm happy. Mayor Baker says a decision won't be made until January, but even if approved, it would be two years before the team would move south. Reporting from Tropicana Field, I'm Ray Canaveri. Now back to you in the studio. Thanks for that report. In other sports news, there's talk. Women are not only invading sports by playing the games themselves. One local lady is proving women also have an eye for the game. Here's the story about a woman who likes to call the shots. It's not that unusual for this 35-year-old to be pulling loads of baseball equipment out of her car. In fact, she loves this sport so much that she goes to games almost every day. Strike two, counts two and two. A school teacher by day, Debbie finds time to umpire when she's not giving tests or grading papers. And for some of these kids, they not only have to face Debbie in the classroom, they also have to listen to her on the diamond. Strike two. Debbie admits it's not an easy job. She says the kids never cause her any problems, but says the parents are the ones that sometimes disagree with her calls. Back to you. 